Hello folks, hope you're all doing well. On today's video we are looking at pests and two, two pests in particular. One is pigeons, we've got big trees right over there, loads of pigeons and stuff like that. And the other is leather jackets. Now for those of you who don't know what leather jackets are, they are the larvae of the, of the mayfly, uh, daddy long legs, call them what you will. They, they, they come out, they lay their eggs in the soil, the eggs hatch, the larvae, the leather jackets come out and they eat the roots of your plants. And the problem is, you don't know that they're eating the roots of your plants until the plants start to die. Now I had a problem with these early on in the year. There's three, three raised beds just here to the right. I'll show you them in a minute once we're doing it. And these leather jackets, I put some lovely lettuces, grew some little baby lettuces, put them out in there and they got absolutely demolished by these leather jackets. Dug the soil over, found all the larvae in there. They were absolutely horrible. One of my pals, he's got an allotment over there. They had them as well. They lost loads of stuff, so they're a bit of a pain. So you can get nematodes for them, and that's upside down. And I've mentioned nematodes before because I use them for the slugs. So I'm going to use them for the leather jackets as well. But the important thing about the leather jackets is the time of year that you, that you put the application on. So October and November, you the... the Oh, what do you call them? The leather jackets, the larvae, they're not very big and they're not very strong. So you only need a light application of the nematodes. However, if you do it in the springtime and the summertime, they're a lot bigger, they're a lot stronger. It's just before they're going to hatch and become the fly. So you need to apply loads and loads and loads of it. And obviously that's more expensive because, let's be honest, nematodes aren't cheap. I mean, that's about 14, 15 quid for this little packet, but it'll do 100 square meters. So it'll do all my beds, it'll do the whole plot, and then that's it done. So I've mentioned these before about the slugs, and they're, they're dead easy to use. One thing to remember is they always have a best before date on, and it's usually within a couple of weeks after you buy them. And what you need to do is make a bit of a stock to begin with. So you open these up like this. Now this watering can here has about five litres of water in it. And I'm just going to put the, the nematodes in there. They're a bit, a bit sticky. <laughs> a bit messy, it's not very nice, but they're all dormant at this stage, and it's putting them in the water that activates them and gets them going. Now, if you bear with me a wee second, I'm just going to get a cane and come back, just so I've got something to stir this with. Just a jiffy. Right, there we go, just the job. So, give them a good mix, and then it goes all sort of cloudy as is. As you'd sort of imagine, just want to give that a good mix, just get it all broken up. And there's a couple of bits on the top there that I've missed. And because they're so expensive, I don't want to miss any bits. There we go, we'll give them a mix. So that's the stock solution. So you need to use 0.5 litres of this to every 5 litres of water. Now this watering can here has got about 10 litres in it. I'm just going to tip a little bit at the top because I've not left any space to put the stock solution in. So we've got the 10 litres, and we're gonna add the stock. You could measure this out exactly. You can use jugs, measuring jugs, and all sorts of stuff, but it's just a bit of a faff as far as I'm concerned. So I'll do it, I'll do it this way. So that's the, the stock solution in the water, watered down, ready to go in the beds. And what I'll do, bear with me a second. I'm just gonna spin you around, right? So these three pallet collar raised beds along here, these are the ones that we had the problems with with the leather jackets in. Now what the instructions say is get a really coarse rose and put it on the end of your watering can. And the reason for that is, if you use a fine rose, it gets blocked up with the nematodes coming out, which is no good for anybody. I don't have a coarse rose, so I'm just sprinkling it on freehand. I haven't got a rose on, because I know from doing it with the, the ones for the slugs, the nema slug, it's just gonna get blocked up. But it's just a case of doing this over all the beds. So that's them done. That's maybe used about half of that for these three beds here. I'm going to do the same over all the plot. I'm even going to go inside the polytunnel and do it in there because I've seen the, the little daddy long legs, mayflies, sort of flying about in there. So we'll get it done in there as well. And I'll not bore you with that because it really is as simple as that. So get your nematodes, make the stock solution water it down, sprinkle it over your beds, job done. Now I mentioned before there was a second pest that I was going to talk about today. So what I'll do, I'm going to come over there, I'm going to grab the camera and we'll have a, 
We'll have a little walk around for this one. So you'll have to bear with me, sorry, just for a second with a dodgy, shaky camera work there. And we'll have a little walk down here. Now I pointed this out at the end of my last video. And you can see a lot, a lot of my stuff has nets on them like this. Or like environment, you know, the, the leaks don't get bothered by anything. So we'll just leave them, leave them be. But the sprouts, they, they've been attacked by the pigeons. So if we spin round here, I've mentioned the pigeons before. We've got loads of big trees over there, and see if look there, look there. You see them? Look, you can see them flying about. It's almost as if I'd planned that. And they like to come over here, and they've obviously been munching the top of these Brussels sprouts. Now they've not, they've not caused too much of a problem so far because there's lots of green leaves still, much further down the plants, and the sprouts are going well, and they're not actually going to be here much longer because those ones there are just about ready to be picked. But you can see I've got this. This is one of the beds had the covers on it. Now, the sprouts got too tall for the covers, so I had to open them up, push the cover back, and leave them out. And unfortunately, they've been a bit, a bit sort of picked. But let me just have a wander over here, right? And we're not going to be looking at my plot. Excuse the mess over this end, because some of this needs sorting out. And if we just look over my pal Charlie's fence, into his allotment, you can see how he's done his netting, just there, right in front of you, nice and tall over the sprouts. So anything that the birds, the pigeons, anything like that, that are gonna come and get nice tall netting over the top of it, just the job. So that was just a quick one there. Anyway, that's just a quick one, just a quick midweek one. Hopefully I'll get this out then. If you like what we're up to, give us a like and subscribe, give us a thumbs up, leave us comments down below, and I'll maybe I'll maybe do some more on some pests and things during, during the next few months, uh, about the slugs and the snails and what I'm doing about them and all the other sort of beasts and bugs and stuff that we get around here that we just don't want eating everything. Anyway, that's me just about done for today and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now, folks.